Um, so I know a lot of you guys will probably be asleep, which is fine. Oh, there we go. Um, but I needed to come down here and sew a little bit. I literally, my eyes are so red. I watched that Melanie Ham um, documentary that her husband made and posted today. Oh, it was brutal. I just cried the whole time. It was so sad. But once a few of you guys come on here, I will tell you why I'm on here so late. And it's just going to be a quick video. I need to fix something. <laughs> and um, so I'll fix it and I'll show you how I'm going to fix it. I could, you know, do a video right now and record like a tutorial on how to fix FPP. But um, I thought I'll just go live. <laughs> it's just easier. It's so easy. It's so much easier to come on live and show you something than it is to try and like film and get the lighting and the angling right and edit it and then post it. So I'm going to wait until a few more people hop on. I know it's really late, so people might not be watching YouTube, and if not, that's fine. Um, you guys can catch the replay. But um, Austin came down here tonight while I was up bawling my eyes out um, watching Melanie Ham, and he sent me a picture of a block. He was trimming some border fabric for this dragon quilt that he's making. Hey, Courtney! And he didn't check underneath. Um, and he cut through my legit kit block. Luckily, it was the simple block, so it's going to be an easy fix. Oh my god. Um, if he would have cut through this one... I would have gone absolutely insane because I just finished this this morning and there's like, I'm not even kidding, like 70 pieces in this. Like there's a lot of work that went into this. So it still sucks that he cut through my other block, but it's going to be super easy to fix. So let me show you what he did. He felt so bad, by the way, so I'm not trying to make him feel bad, but he just sliced through my block. This happened. This is what happens when your husband goes loose and you're sewing. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I'm so happy that it was this block because it's going to be easy. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to fix it. Hi Kathleen. Hi Christine. Hi mom. It's going to be a quick video. I'm fixing a block. Um, just to recap for everyone who's hopping in, first I want to say congratulations to our friend Sean. He just hit a thousand subscribers. He did it, so I'm so, so proud of him. Um, but I am fixing a block. Thank the good lord that it's not this block, because if it were this block, I think I would just, like, cry, honestly. <laughs> um, so good job, Austin, cutting this block, especially in this area, a lot easier to fix. Um, I don't know you on YouTube. What? Um, hello June! So we're gonna fix this and the first thing that we're gonna do is when he sent me the picture, I just thought it was the fabric that he sliced through, um, but I came down here to assess the damage. Hello Carissa! Hi Maddie! Hi Natalie! Um, I came down here to assess the damage. Yes, he did this on accident. He feels terrible. He came down here. Hi, Janine. He came down here to trim some fabric for his dragon quilt that he's making. And I have, like, my big cutting table has, like, the legit kit's fabric all over it. So he was cutting on a smaller cutting mat down here. Um, he's like, why are you broadcasting my mistake? He's coming down the stairs. Do you have any words that you want to say? Come on! Do you have any words? <laughs> Come say hi. Come say hi. We want to know the, the, <laughs> the person that did this. Do you have any words for our friends? It was completely unintentional. <laughs> I was, you're supposed to cut back here, but look at all this stuff. I don't want to have to move it and then mess up. Yeah. So. I understand. It's okay. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't that one. Oh my god, I would have <laughs> I would have freaked out. Do you have any other words you want to say before you're banished from the sewing area tonight? 
Do you want to show them your um, dragon quote real quick? And what plans you have for them? Amy said, Austin, you have to be so careful. Was it S-E-W? So careful. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. S, she missed opportunity there. So uh, he wants to show you guys what he's been working on. This is why he sacrificed my blood. <laughs> Got some of this, what is this, grunge? Yeah. Got a little layer, like four inches or something. And mm-hmm. then, I, don't, I don't know the technical terms, so. Donna said, me. LOL, Austin. Oh, sweetie, run. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got his little panels that he cut out, too. So yeah, he's going to put on there. It's kind of off. It'll actually be higher, and then, like, it'll be in the corners. It's going to be a big quilt. And we found a cool dragon panto on Urban Elements. There are a few. We can keep looking, but even, like, flames would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think flames would even be better. That's all that's left of this one. Yeah. And right. then you've got some red dragon yeah, scales uh, for your binding, which is really cool. That's one of my favorite. Everyone's saying, nice. That is really nice. Good job. Good thing Beth loves you. <laughs> <laughs> That is really nice. Everyone's saying good job. Thank you. Yeah, he, he was mad at me when I bought this fabric, but um, I knew he would like it. That's pretty cool. He was just throwing a fit because it was his birthday, and he never wants anyone to do anything nice for him. So, um, <laughs> I am coming out swinging tonight. I'm literally sitting upstairs bawling my eyes out, watching this video, and I see a text come up on my screen. He's like, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to do this, and I cut I cut this block while I was doing this, and I was just like... <laughs> but I'm watching something very, very serious and sad, and I'm like, well... And, like, the whole s- scheme of things, this doesn't really matter. I can fix it really easily, so... Amy said she's so proud of you. June says it's doing a great job. Um, I love it. Great job, Austin. Not mad no more. <laughs> Hi, uh, Nancy. Um, I wish my husband would do the same as your husband, but mine is scared of my machines. Well, they should really be scared of your rotary cutter. <laughs> I'm just gonna poke fun at him. I'm not like I'm not upset. <laughs> she said that her husband was scared of the sewing machines, and I said he should really be scared of the rotary cutters. <laughs> Uh, everyone's saying it's beautiful. Austin, cuts happen, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, Beth, and so glad it's an easy fix. Oh, no. Crap. I mean, cuts happen. <laughs> Is it Melanie Ham? I watched a few minutes so far and was bawling. Yes, I watched the whole thing. I, like, had Louise laying on me, and Austin was like, do you want me to come get Louise? I was like, no. Like, she is my... She's my security blanket right now. Like, I need to be cuddling with her while I'm watching this. Um, And, oh, my God, I cried the whole time. Like, my eyes are, like, puffy and red. Um, And Austin, he even told me, because I was like, I'm going to watch that. Like, it released it. He's like, I'm not going to be anywhere near you while you're watching that. Um, Ooh, pulled pork. I know. I I mentioned that. Um. Sean hit a thousand. I'm so proud of him. He just hit it. Hello, glad glad Austin's willing to de- design a quilt. Oh my gosh, can't even speak. Yes, he is doing a great job. So steak and potatoes. We had that for dinner tonight. I was crying my heart out too, babe. It's so freaking sad. Like, mm, cancer just sucks. Absolutely sucks. I'm an hour, a half hour into it. I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Oh my god, good luck. I was just in a puddle, honestly. Like, I could just, I was like, I hope I'm not drenching Louise right now because she was laying right on me and I could just feel like water just pooling in my neck because I was like, <laughs> this. So, this was all so wet. Um, okay, so how are we going to fix this? All right. It's cut through the fabric, it's cut through the paper. My kids like to take all my stuff and, and run around with it. So first things first is I want to secure the paper so that it's stable and so it doesn't tear anymore. So um, we're going to be using some masking tape. This is a very handy tool for FPP. I'm going to try and like move this down. Okay. So do you see that this is like, you know, bam, coming up. Not good. Um, 
So, oh, I'm so sorry, Courtney. Um, so we're going to take this and we're going to lay it right on top of that. And we're going to try and get the paper to just lay like naturally so that it doesn't um, shift. Um, so another thing I want to mention is tomorrow the long arm will be assembled. They're coming at 9 a.m. and so we're really really excited for that. Thank you! Austin's making it up with starbursts and um, ice cold water which is my favorite. Thank you! See this is gonna be so easy. I'm just gonna tape this and then I'm going to like find a line so I can see where that cut is right there through the fabric. I'm going to go at least a quarter inch up. I'm going to just draw, since all of this is like angled piecing, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm just going to draw a line. And I'm going to make sure that it doesn't go past this cut, okay? And then I'm going to um, just piece it like a normal FPP block. So I'm going to take, where is my black ruler? I'm gonna take my black ruler and then I'm going to just pick a line. We're gonna shift you guys down a little bit. And I'm gonna again make sure that I don't go past that and I wanna keep the style of the block similar. So then I'm just drawing, I'm just making a new line. So now yeah, but I'm going to have to get a different piece of fabric because uh, that's, I can use it later on in a different block, but, okay, so there's my new line. I think that looks fine. So, I'm just going to go on and do exactly what I do when I'm doing other things. So, I'm going to go to my next line, stick my card right underneath that line that I just made. And basically, I'm going to trim off that section that has the cut. I'm going to do my quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to find um, that same color or something similar if I'm out of that um, to piece on to the next. So, where did he put my rotary cutter? Right here. Okay. So then we just continue on like we've always done, right? Slice. Easy fix. So now I can put this with its label. So I know this is IO. So I'm going to go find my IO and I'm going to put this with it so I can use it later on. And then I'm going to try and find a piece big enough to cover that new section that I made. And I hope I can. If not, we'll find an alternative. Ah! And I have plenty of it left. So I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to cut a piece big enough to go in that section. <laughs> yes, I've had to get crafty with fixing. So there's another way too. So say um, we didn't patch the paper, we didn't draw a new line, we didn't cut a seam allowance. Um, another great way to have done it was if I just like cut the rest of that fabric, if I would have like followed that line and cut it off and then I could have just grabbed a piece of fabric big like bigger than what I would need and then I would do right sides together just like regular sewing and then I would flip it over and it'd be fine so that's like another easy way to do it after I did that I would have to flip it over and then trim all the way around my block but that's another really easy way to fix it say like you're doing FPP and you just don't have big enough you don't have a big enough slice of fabric you didn't cut it big enough and um, you want to fix it you don't want to tear it out maybe it's just a tiny tiny little bit grab a little fabric okay grab a little piece of fabric and you could even do it like this uh, right sides together then take it over sew it and then move it over and that's a great way to fix it um, without doing a ton of triage like I believe Maddie was the one that said that or maybe it was Christine hold on let me look yep Christine FPP triage oh my god Amy cancer so sucks I was like mm, I was like just bawling my eyes out thinking about everything that they endured 
everything. Oh my god. Good night, Janine. Get some sleep, okay? Maybe we can hang out this weekend when we have the long arm put together. Um Ah Alright, yeah, I'm thinking about doing like a live, um, maybe like filming a blog kind of video where we just like go throughout the day and we talk about like how it's going and then I could like edit it and then upload it so it'd be like a, a vlog update of the long arm. I thought about doing a time lapse but I was like oh my gosh it's gonna take five hours for them to put it together so I, I'm gonna be without my phone for five hours. No thanks. Um, and yes I've done this plenty of times. You gotta get crafty sometimes. Hi Terry. Okay. So another thing about um, your husband coming in your your sewing area you don't know where anything is honestly that's my fault though because all of my stuff is behind the laptop so I can't see so I got a whole big bag of starburst today the pregnancy cravings have started folks I got um, a bunch of groceries today I told Austin he was like why don't you go and I'll keep the kids and you go get groceries and I was like you don't want that to happen you do not want me to go to the grocery store unattended because I will go off the list. Like when I go grocery shopping, um, it's just not a good thing. So I'm like, you don't want me to go. And he's like, no, 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 go. You haven't gone in so long, just you. And I'm like, okay, if that's how you want it to be. But I don't wanna hear any comments when I get back home. <laughs> okay. And the rest of this is just doing exactly what we do all the time. And then I'm going to take those scraps from this fabric. And I'm going to like lay them in there. Like a little taco. And then lay them down. Over there. So I think this fabric is definitely big enough to cover that. If it's not, we won't have a problem, I'm telling you. My uncle had been dealing with cancer the last two years. It's freaking me out, but he says two days ago, I think I might take it. I said there's no other option. <sighs> so sad. <sighs> Just really like, there's no reason for it. Absolutely no reason for people to suffer and lose their loved ones. Like, how do we not have a cure? How do we not have a cure? Okay. Now we are going to sew on that line that we just drew. Same thing that we always do. Ah, half an inch or less. That did not sound good. I don't feel like it's actually sewing. Yeah, it's not sewing. What the heck is going on with my machine? I'm about to uh, switch my Juki out. So now that I'm not using the cutie anymore, my Juki is just sitting over there on a table. And so I'm gonna bring my Juki over here and I'm gonna start piecing with it. Cause it's an industrial state straight stitch. So that's perfect for all the things that I'm gonna be doing. And then I'm gonna let Austin use this one whenever he wants for sewing. And I'll still use this one too, but I thought it'd be cool if he had like his own machine we had a secret hiding place for snacks when my kids were little. Um, they never thought there might be snacks in their hiding. Oh my gosh, my parents had food from us all the time. I found every single box of Girl Scout cookies, let me tell you. I found them. You can't hide food from me. And there we go. And I think that it, it works really well because this is a really dark fabric, so you're not going to be able to see that, like, pointless scene. I mean, it's 
to the design is pointless because it's the same fabric. I could have done a different fabric and made it more interesting, but um, since it's my test block, I didn't I didn't want to change it. You know what I mean? I want to do what the pattern says. So I'm going to trim. And like this is a really good hefty scrap. So I'm going to put that over with that fabric so I can use later. This one, I'm probably not going to use that. But that is how you fix um, an FPP block. If you ever slice through it, or if your husband ever comes down and slices through your, your testing block. Um, now, if he would have cut through the other one, not sure how I would have done that. But good night, Natalie. Very true, Nancy. Mm, I'm so sorry, Kathleen. So we fixed it. We fixed it. Yeah, yeah. So we taped it on the back to secure the paper from ripping any further and to give us like an accurate template. We made our own new line. As you can see there, we trimmed our seam allowance. We found fabric to fit that space. We sewed on the line. We flipped it over and we finger pressed. And this is how you fix an FPP block. And now I kind of want to lock them up in case he comes down again. Oh man. So I'm going to put this fabric with that. I was really just coming on to do that because um, I wasn't planning on sewing tonight. I was like, you know what? I finished my two blocks for my testing, so I feel like accomplished enough to take a break. Um, I've been getting more tired recently, so these are the two that I was responsible for. Um, just means now you have put your unique mark on a quilt. Very true. More like Austin made his... Unique mark on it. Beth, is that the same FPP from Legit Kits you were working on yesterday? Yes. So let me show you. Um, I'm sorry I went ahead this morning. So it was about 73 degrees out today. So I let the kids go out and play. And um, the windows are like right here so I can watch them when they're on the trampoline or on the slide or running around. So I let them go run around and I worked on finishing the rest of the blocks that I was working on. And then I pieced them all together before lunch. So I did work ahead without you. I'm so sorry. I wanted to get this block done, but don't worry. We have 16 more blocks to make. Um, and I think my next course of action is I'm going to hit all of the super easy peasy blocks. So I'm going to hit this one and 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 this one. And then I'm going to work my way into the body of the bird and then I'm going to get more into the grass. I think I'm going to like wait to do the grass for a little bit. I'm grassed out right now. There's a lot of grass in that last piece. Um, it was really cool because when we got our blocks assigned for what we were doing, um, in the two pieces that I, the two blocks that I was responsible for, there were 83 pieces. 83 pieces in two blocks absolutely insane um but the detail and the color and everything is just like unmatched like it is such a cool design um i was like i don't know this whole time i'm like how the heck did heather do scullifer like she did a full quilt this is just the wall hanging it's only 30 by 40 so i was like oh it won't be that bad oh my goodness that that grass block took quite a bit of time but these bigger sections aren't going to take long I think I could have this done in like two weeks or like a week and a half. Sorry, I got the hiccups. I've got Starburst hiccups. Depending on how much I play around on the long arm. So it's going to be here. Well, it's here. Um, they're going to be here at 9 a.m. And they're going to put together. So 30 by 40 is large for that work. Yeah. I think it was denial. I was telling myself, I was like, oh, a wall hanging? That's so much, like, so much better. It's so much more manageable. I can do it. Mm. Look at the head. 
Look at that section. Look at all the little bits. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to sound like an absolute butt. I'm not scared of the pieces. It's just having the patience to do them. Like there's a lot of pieces. And so it's okay. I'm going to get through it, but it's going to take some time. But it's going to be worth it. It's going to be really worth it. Okay. I would quit if I were you or if that were me. <laughs> I'm too stubborn. I've started... I'm going to get all the way through, plus I need to clear off all this fabric on my cutting table so that I can work on Heather's quilt next. So this is the big thing um, that I'm going to finish. I've been wanting to do a legit kits for so freaking long. And now that it's sitting here, I'm like, what did I, what was I thinking? Because it's, it's a lot of pieces. I kind of think that like, if you think about it if they blew this up and it was like a full-size quilt it wouldn't be that bad there would still be a lot of pieces yes but the pieces would be bigger and so some of these sections like the head and the beak and even some of these grass sections would be bigger and they wouldn't take as long um the tiny pieces and having a tiny like a bunch of tiny pieces in one like concentrated area is tedious like it is just um, time consuming to get that together. So I almost feel like if they blew it up, maybe it wouldn't be that bad because there's more bigger sections. You know, it doesn't go so bad. That block is so pretty all by itself. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, we'll just frame it and call it good. <laughs> I'm working on my Christmas lights while I drink my sleepy time tea. I'm having lunch with my best friend tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. What are you guys having for lunch? <laughs> I'm too Beth, but I would... I'll be mad, but I would do it. <laughs> so true, Shelly. That's what I'm, like, trying to remind myself of. It's, like, it's going to be hanging up on a wall very soon. And now... Sorry, this is so good. Hi, Crystal. Mmm. I'm chewing on these candies. Mm. Sorry, I don't want to talk with my mouth full of candy, but another thing that the long arm is going to give me is like a sense of relief because I really only have to worry about half of what I was worrying up, worrying about before. Hi, Marla. So, ooh, Mexican food. You can never go wrong with Mexican food. But it's, it's so much of a relief because I, in a sense, only have to worry about piecing things now. Like, I don't have to worry about taking my stuff upstairs, basing it on the floor, um, trying to run it through my machine or get it hooked up on the cutie and reposition it a thousand times. So, like, now my mindset has changed where it's like, I can get so much done because all I have to worry about is piecing. The things that take me the longest and the things that I hate doing, like basting on the floor, especially pregnant, um, I, I quilted like the whole nine months of my pregnancy with Louise and I was basing quilts up to like 36, 37 weeks pregnant and it was terrible. I was always out of breath. I was hot. I was on my knees, my back hurt. Um, and it's just nice now that it's like, I can get so much more work done and I can actually enjoy the quilting part. I can enjoy that part because it's not like I have to get through basting to get there. You know what I mean? So I'm really, really excited. Um, Mexican food. What do you get when you get Mexican food? I'm having chips and hummus and a nightcap. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, I'm not going to be on for long. I just wanted to come on and show you guys. Um, I couldn't leave that block down here just broken and alone, knowing that it was broken and alone. <laughs> I was like, well, darn it, because I wasn't going to sew tonight. I watched that documentary, and I was just like, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot go down there right now. Um, but I decided to come down here and fix it. And yeah, I'm prepping to do a very small Pride and Joy pattern tomorrow. I've been trying to get her on my channel. Um, it's been hit and miss. 
she is a very busy lady. And so getting it scheduled has been really hard. There was one night she was like, okay, I can do it right now. And it was like, I was getting the kids down for bed. And so I didn't see the message from her until like two hours later. And she's two hours time different. So by the time I saw it, I was like, I've already missed you. But I've been trying to be so persistent because she is amazing. She's brilliant. And I would just love to have her on my channel. Mm -hmm. All right, Marla, I'll show you what I did. Okay, so I came down here and it was cut. And um, based on the picture, let me show you the picture that he sent me. Um, I thought that it was just the paper, I don't, or just the fabric. I don't know why I thought that. I always underestimate the capabilities of a rotary cutter. Um, but it kind of looked like the paper was still underneath. So that's what he sent me. Um, while I was upstairs crying, I was like, it's really not that bad. It's not even important. I'm like watching something that's like truly like life changing and I'm not going to get upset about a block. So I was like, it's fine. I will come fix it later. And, uh, so I came down here, popped on live so I could show you guys what that process looked like in case any of you guys have had this happen. Got my masking tape, um, secured the paper first before you do anything. You want to make sure your paper doesn't move anymore. It doesn't rip anymore. And then I took my ruler and I just drew a line across. And so my, my rip was right here. And so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't like trying to put a line like right there because I needed at least a quarter inch above for that seam allowance, right? So I went a little bit above just to give myself some room, drew a line, um, and then folded, folded below that line like that. And then I cut my seam allowance. And then I went and grabbed some fabric that was big enough for the section. And then voila, then I trimmed all the way around. So another way that I could have fixed that without um, drawing a line and sewing on the paper, I could have just um, finished that cut all the way across the fabric. And then I could have just grabbed, you know, an obnoxiously big section of fabric. And I could have just done right sides together off the paper and then sewed it and then flipped it over and it would have been just fine. But um, I'm only working with like a certain amount of fabric. So I didn't want to waste a ton. So this was a good way for me to see how much I really needed to fill that space. So that's why I chose that method. I've done the other method before and it worked just fine for that, for what I was working on. Um, and then I'll show you, I finished the block that we were working on last night. Look at the back. Um, I think going forward, I'm going to be using my add an eighth ruler instead of my add a quarter ruler because um, some sections in this block were very bulky with that quarter inch seam allowance um, all the way around. So I think I'm going to focus on using my add an eighth instead, um, which if I can find it somewhere, it's somewhere on this desk. Um, it's just the same as the add a quarter ruler, but it's add an eighth. So, but it's all fixed. Guacamole, queso, and either chimichangas or fish tacos or burrito. It depends on the mood. Now, are you like true authentic Mexican food or do you like Tex-Mex? I like Tex-Mex the most because I don't really love onions and like peppers and tomatoes. So Tex-Mex is like the perfect, the perfect medium for me to enjoy the Mexican food. Um, but also I can't do spicy food, so that's why I really enjoy Tex-Mex. That's so many pieces. So many pieces, Terry. Oh my gosh. Those two blocks had 83. The other testers, they pretty much broke up the pattern. A simple block and a more complex block. And a lot of them had like 80, 90 pieces. So everyone was working with about the same. So how do you handle... All that bulk when quilting. I notice on the back of my Clifford that I can see some of the seams. Um, you know that's a hard, that's an easy that's a that's a hard question. So this you're just gonna have to go really slow um, in these sections where you're seeing this bulk. You have to go slow, or you're gonna break a needle. Um, honestly, was your issues were. 
were they like in the eye area where all of those pieces were? The thing that I recommend is when you're working on it, and you know this, you are an FPP star, Christine. Um, but I really would recommend the add an eighth ruler if you don't have it yet, especially if you do a lot of FPP like you have been doing. That add an eighth helps so much, and it'll cut that bulk down in half. Like, it's really, really um, amazing. It's a smaller ruler, so let me show you. Let me see it over here now. I'm sure they have an add an eighth plus. So this is add a quarter plus, and then this is my add an eighth plus, or just the regular add an eighth. It's so small. But um, as you can probably imagine, the seam allowance is smaller. So that really, really helps in those sections. So I highly recommend checking out Add an Eighth Ruler, Christine. You would love it. The density of quilting caused the seams to pop. I use Add an Eighth. Really? That's very interesting. Hmm. Pop out, not pop. Oh, yeah. I've had that before, too. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, that's very frustrating. I think some people even say, like, they will just press their seams open, but I don't see how that, like, you can tell, let me find some sections in here. There was a section where it was, like, definitely popping out, or there was just some funky stuff happening. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, but, yeah. I I have no, um, like, foolproof method, method to get through that, but the add an eighth does help. We have an area near us with lots of Mexican food. They have an annual taco crawl and you get to try tacos from 20 different restaurants. You have to do it over several days. Oh, that sounds amazing. Sign me in, sign me up. I would love that. There's a new restaurant right by my house from Fomex. Have no idea what they'll serve, LOL. Thought it, <laughs> Yvette uses the acorn pin to make the seams really, really flat. Yeah, that's that's a good one too. Um, sometimes it's just the pattern too. Like sometimes I took a, a, a class on pattern writing and sometimes it's just the design. Like sometimes there's no way around it. Like you can try your best to minimize it, but sometimes just the way the pattern is written and where the lines and the seams are going, sometimes there's no way. Like that color wheel quilt that I did, by design, there was no way to get around that center seam, right? Like everything was joining right there. And so you could have broken that pattern into doing like sections. Like if you look at the Tara Lee pattern chroma quilt, she broke a circular quilt into squares. And that would help um, get around that center bulk seam. And so sometimes it's just by design. Like if you know, you have these, sometimes you just can't get around it. Or at least that's what I tell myself. And I just, <laughs> I just accept it. I haven't tried the acorn pin. I did see that um, it was on Instagram. Someone shared, it looks like Elmer's glue came out with like, a, literally a dupe for the acorn pin. It has a precision point. It's got a liquid um solution or whatever and it looks just like the acorn pen so I am too cheap to buy the acorn and try it out but I'm not too cheap to go to Walmart and find that Elmer's glue I should have done that today when I was grocery shopping will you trust the long arm with quilting something like that um honestly I think it could get well the okay so the color wheel quilt something like that no that seam was insane and I was like you had to beat that thing down with a hammer I'm not even kidding it was so big and I told Kelly I was like this is gonna break your long arm and she was like no I'm just gonna like do the panto and I'm gonna make it just so so that I go around the center and I don't even quilt that because my goodness things could have gone awry but um you know with this one I, I have some confidence because they aren't as crazy I feel like you'll know when you meet a seam that there's just no getting through that. I did match stick quilting on it, as I've seen so many others do. But on FVP, and it pulls everything very tight on the back. Oh, very nice. I think I would rather quilt that on my Juki. If I was doing it on domestic, I would rather do it on the Juki because it's industrial. I feel like it'd be better. 
Hmm, I use the acorn pen. I'm addicted. I had to buy a gallon of it on Amazon. A gallon, Marla. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I want to try the Elmer's version. That acorn stuff, if I start to like it, that's another thing that I have to buy. <laughs> I'm going to have one more candy. Because I'm having so much fun chatting with you guys. And then I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to put on a show. And I'm going to try and go to sleep. So I can wake up. And watch this long arm be put together tomorrow morning. It's cheaper by the gallon. Oh, I bet. Definitely. <laughs> Sorry. He brought these Starbursts down. I didn't bring them down. He did. That's what I feel like because with FPP, I have that additional expense. I don't always do it. Um, but I really do like using foundation paper. And so that is like something that's added into the sewing thing. Um, and so if I start liking something, I mean, I, I started liking fabric. See where that got us. <laughs> Hi, Marie. I want some Starburst too. I'm so sorry. I'm being so rude eating this in front of you guys. I'm sorry. I saw like a giant bag of it today while I was grocery shopping. It was like 10 bucks for like a five pound bag. And I was like, I think I'm going to get some Starburst today. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, can I share with you guys the best thing ever? Oh, it like just made my day. So I was at the grocery store and I'm going through the aisles. I'm picking out our groceries completely unsupervised, having a blast, just throwing stuff in there. And I come across the peanut butter aisle and this aisle has been dismal for months. Like it has just been a sad, sad aisle that I walk by and I just remember the GIF because GIF has been recalled. So it's been gone. Like it hasn't been on the shelves for like so long. And that is my peanut butter. That is my, my peanut butter. I've tried Peter Pan. Hate it. I've tried Skippy. Eh, not terrible. I We were getting the great value and it was okay. But every time I had a PB&J, I would just eat it and I'd be reminded of what was missing in my sandwich. I was like, ah, oh, it's okay, but it's not JIF. And so I found, I was like, okay, I'll try Skippy again and see what I think. So I literally had Skippy in my hand and I looked down and like the low, low shelf had like six things of Jif peanut butter. And I was like, oh my God, Jif peanut butter is back. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting. And so I don't even care at this point if I get poisoned or whatever. I am so ready to have my Jif back. Jif was recalled, but they were making new ones and there was new stuff on the shelf today. So if you are a peanut butter enthusiast or snob, like Austin calls me, um, and you have been missing Jif, go check your go check your grocery store. Why was it recalled? Um, I think there were like shards in there. <laughs> Sounds terrible. I think there were like metal shards in there. Pretty sure that's what it was. I'm at 9% power, so... So excited for you, Beth. I wouldn't be able to sleep if it was me getting my long arm set up in the morning. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to sleep either. But honestly, crying and um, just being like pregnant tired is helping. So <laughs> I think it's going to it's gonna work out. I'm going to be able to go up there and, and lay down and sleep. But just because I'm already exhausted kind of emotionally and physically. Grocery stop shopping takes a lot out of you. I got, I got all the stuff in the trunk. And I got like, I opened a box of fruit snacks, grabbed two packs, and then got a Gatorade. And I just gulped it down in the car and ate my fruit snacks on the way home. We live like two minutes away from Walmart, so. I, I had worked up an appetite. Oh, salmonella. 
I thought it was shards, but maybe it was salmonella. Right, Marla? Chip is the best. Let's get into it once I get done chewing this. This is like the worst food to eat while trying to talk. Okay, let's go over the reasons why Jip is the best. It's not super oily like other peanut butters. It's legit creamy. No oil. Like it, It's not an oily mess. Two, it's not too sweet. I hate really, really sweet peanut butter. Like it's the perfect, it's the perfect blend of flavor. And then three, it, it doesn't get dry. Like a lot of other peanut butters get just really dry, don't they? Like they just get dry and it's like, <laughs> while you're eating, it's just not good. I'm 60, raised on Jif, only kind I will eat. It's the best, Marla. I'm so happy to have you on Team Jif. My granddaughter cannot be near a peanut butter. She has an EpiPen for her nut allergies, so, oh, wow. The peanut butter I like is the stuff you grind yourself in the bulk food section. Oh, <laughs> I have never tried that before. Jif is the best, yeah. See, we've got a lot of Jif lovers. See, if, if Heather was on right now, she does not like peanut butter at all. So she'd be like, it doesn't even matter what brand. So she, I just love that about her. Like, it cracks me up that she doesn't like peanut butter. I never would have thought that someone would just not like peanut butter. Like, usually the only reason why people don't eat it is because they're allergic. So I'm like, you don't like peanut butter? But you're allowed to consume it? Like, what? So, all right. Let me show you guys. I'll show you one more. I'll show you one more view of what the basement looks like. Because tomorrow morning, things are going to start changing. And there's going to be a freaking long arm sitting here tomorrow night. Um, okay. So here we go. Boxes. Austin's quilt. Same here with Jif. Keep looking, okay? There were only like, I'm not even kidding, like six, six there. And I'm like, so happy I snagged one. Here is my, my rack. <laughs> I have a lot of things. A lot of things that can be quilted. Like wall hangings, quilts. Oh my gosh, sorry. I'm getting the hiccups because I just like scarfed down those starbursts. And so I've got a lot of things that can keep me busy once I practice and I get comfortable enough to like work on this stuff. And then of course when Austin finishes his quilt, we will do that. And then um, we moved the kids stuff here. My We moved the fish tank next to my armoire. And then this is what the basement looks like. Yeah, let's do a, I'm gonna make you guys dizzy. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> You come to my channel to talk about peanut butter and get dizzy, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, God. There was a pin magnetically stuck to my laptop. Yikes. All right. I'm going to read through the comments, catch up, and then I'm going to bid you guys adieu because I need to get my beauty, my beauty rest. I mean, I need to take a shower. I actually want to have, like, my hair down tomorrow and look like a person and not a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> because uh, this is, like, literally what I look like all the time. I want to remind Austin that, like, hey. <laughs> um, same here with Jif. Couldn't find any last weekend. I'm excited for you. Are you going to go live after the long arm is set up? I would love to. I would really love to. Um, so I think I'm going to make a video. I'm going to make a vlog, like I said, and then I would love to go live and like show you guys because, ah, I'm so excited. It was really fun going live when they were delivering it. So I think I'll probably go live for a little bit. I don't know if I'll go live and like sew on it tomorrow night, but, um, I will be showing you guys the goods. Like I'm excited. Mom always bought that nasty Adam stuff that separates in. Oh, I hate that. Oh, the oil. Mm -mm. See, Jif doesn't do that. It's like the best. I'm with you, Beth. Is the difference? Yum. LOL. My fave. No idea. No wonder Shelva's been empty here too. Sweet dreams. Keep us updated tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you for hanging out. I just wanted to come on and fix that block and show you guys. Um, so that's done, and I don't have to worry about it. And then. Um, the next lives that you should be expecting from me are some long arming lives and then finishing up working on the legit kits 
Skippy is my is way my favorite. I almost got Skippy today because I was like, you know what? I'm so sick of this great value because it's not good and it's like too sweet. It's just I hate really sweet peanut butter. Jiffy's not too sweet. To stop separation of peanut butter, turn the jar upside down. I knew that because my friend had me try sunflower butter and it has a lot of oil, so we store it upside down. But sunflower butter is really good. If you haven't tried it, have some sunflower butter and dip your apples in it. It's so good. Ooh, great value. Yeah, there's some things you can get away with doing great value, um, but there's also things that you cannot get away with. Austin gets on me all the time. Have a good night, Beth. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, Carissa. Good night, June. Good night, Kathleen, Terry, Amy, Crystal, Christine, and Nancy, and Shelly, and Francis. I don't want to miss anyone. And Marla, and Terry, and Marie. All right, I'm going to let you guys go, or I'll be on here rambling all night about peanut butter and... <laughs> you guys don't want that. So, uh, sending you hugs. I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to press the button, okay? I'm going to press it right now.